Memphis of WATN Local 24. This is the Local Memphis Live with Yvette and Lauren. Well, good morning. I'm Yvette Whiteside. Thank you for joining us today here on Local Memphis Live. Lauren is out, but FM 100's Ron Olson is sitting in with me today as my co-host. How are you, my man? I'm doing great. I'm doing, I get freaked out this morning when I got up because yeah. the smoke smell. I, I, I called 911. I think my house is on fire. I called 911 this morning about. No, I did call him. I swear to Buddha. Oh I get up. My neighbors are outside with flashlights, thinking yeah. their house is on oh, fire. fire. And we're looking all over the place. And then it, it's like, what's going on? I it can smell I it know. everywhere. From the mulch fire, it's it's everywhere. It's even here in our station. We can smell it. And I didn't even really pick up on it until Chase pointed out. He was talking to me oh, at man. my desk in the newsroom, and I'm like. You know what? It does smell like something is burning. My uh, neighbors were looking. I called 911 and they said, you know, they were kind of like I said, I'm not crazy, but I, you know, they said, yeah. well, we've gotten a lot of calls. So you're not crazy about yeah. them. But I just found out moments ago, I got a tweet from a, a, an anonymous person that says that he is the one responsible for setting the mulch on fire. <laughs> he says that he's not, he's going to keep it up until Lauren Raymer comes back. <laughs> He's sending her smoke signals. <laughs> exactly. Come back. That's going to be like for at least, I don't know, maybe two more weeks. So. Come on, Lauren. I miss her, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, Lauren, she, she misses us as well. I actually had a chance to see Lauren last night. She told me to tell you hi. Cool, cool. How's she doing? Yeah, she's doing great. Good. She yeah, is. Very yeah. good. I'll, I'll, I'll tell her, her that better. you asked me about her. I'm sure she's right. watching. And coming up today here on Local Memphis Live, we got a great show for Ooh. you. Cinderella is showing at the Orpheum Theater. Actor Tanner Ray Wilson will be here to share more about his role. And it's National Pet Obesity Awareness Day. Hollywood Feed will discuss why it's important to monitor the weight of your pets. Plus, our cameras will be live from the Children's Museum of Memphis to learn about their programs for your kids to enjoy. How about that? We'll make sure you watch the Mid-South Showdown between the Ooh. Rebels and the Tigers. You're going to be ready for I it? I cannot wait. <laughs> the teams face off Saturday right here on Local 24. Kickoff is at 11 a.m. And check out the live pregame special, the Gateway Tire Countdown to Kickoff inside the stadium and at Tiger Lane. We're going to have live coverage starting at 10. I hope they invite me to be a part of it. It'd be nice. I can do it. You know, I can I can try and speak with Doc Holliday. Talk you? to Doc. I, I can try and speak with him about that, but that's not me. I'm just holding local Memphis Live. He now. is great what he do. does, man. He I love it. You guys do a great so. job on sports over here, too. Thank I kind you. of just throw yes. it in there, too. Brian and Gil and Doc, they're doing an excellent job. You know, a lot job. of the TV stations do sports. It's about uh, the Grizzlies <laughs> played last night. It's over. <laughs> You guys yeah, get into it, and do. I love that. All of the sports shows that we have created recently, wound up they're doing today. a good job. I know. Job. I'm getting off track here a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I but appreciate I, you sitting here. I love sports on Local 24. I'm going to say it right now. All okay. right. And with that being said, hey, a local young lady is a new Miss Ole Miss. Mary Elizabeth Coculus went to school at Hutchinson right here in the Bluff City and played varsity volleyball. And Local 24's Katina Rankin talked with Mary Beth about how her position helps our neighbors here in the community. Just in time for the big game this week, Ole Miss and the University of Memphis. Well, the Rebels have elected a Mr. and Mrs. Ole Miss. They are two students, one from right here in Memphis, who are hoping to raise awareness about the importance of service-based organizations. Their efforts are local good news. Meet William Knipe and Mary Elizabeth Kakalis. They are the 2015 Mr. and Mrs. Ole Miss. Elizabeth is from the Bluff City, and in her new position as Mrs. Ole Miss, she's looking for ways to extend community services for students throughout the year. We're called to serve at a higher level. We're called to inspire others to serve. One of the things on the duo's agenda working to gather donations for the Ole Miss Family Emergency Fund. That fund provides support for students facing a crisis situation for things like unexpected illness, death of a family member, or loss of property due to natural disaster. Honestly, I believe it's just a great opportunity for me to give back to the university and really grow this position into more than just a personality election. We have been given this platform, we've been given this responsibility, um, and this opportunity to lead, and we really want to take advantage of it. And that's local good news. News. Again, the Ole Miss and U of M game, the Mid-South Showdown, can be seen right here on Local 24, Saturday at 11 a.m. Our pregame special, Gateway Tire Countdown to Kickoff, begins at 10. And we love local good news, so if you have a local good news story that you would like for me to cover, just send me an email to goodnews at localmemphis.com. 
Thank you, Katina. We're all waiting for the big game. Yeah, I got some good news. You can come over and do a show uh, like on the Ron Olson Michelle radio show. That's good news. Hey, that is good news. Come I on have to over. Agree with Anytime. You about that. Bring it on. <laughs> well, Memphis Grizzlies guard Mike Conley will host a basketball clinic for 50 kids wow. from the Binghampton community today. It's his first event as the Grizzlies Junior NBA ambassador. And the cam is taking place this afternoon uh, at uh, 3 to 4 30 at the Grizzlies community courts at How. Park. That's located at Tillman Mimosa between Walnut Grove and Broad Avenue. All right. Well, you may not be the next Justin Timberlake, you know, but you could be the next main attraction on Main Street. Sing your heart out today at Karaoke for the Cure. It's happening from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Ooh. Court Square. What a beautiful day. Chase says it's going to be beautiful all day. Downtown employees either rise to fame or hang your head in shame. You can <laughs> register at downtownmemphis.com. The winning performance will take home 150 50 bucks cash money. Do you do karaoke? Uh, I well, I've, yeah. I've closed down Benny Hanna many a time. Oh, you butcher it. Yeah, when that, I do, that lets me know that you butcher it. I do, uh, uh, you know, but you know, at first I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> don't know. I don't feel I mean, we're having a karaoke moment right there. Okay, well, Local Cares is a proud exclusive television sponsor of this year's American Cancer Society's Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk. Please join us Sunday, October the 25th at 3 p.m. at the Liberty Bowl. Help finish the fight against breast cancer. And we posted a link to the registration in the find a section of localmemphis.com. Well, for the third year, Local Cares is proud to honor our former chief meteorologist, Mark Walden, who died from sickle cell in 2013. Now, you can join us Saturday, October the 17th, for the Mark Walden Memorial Sickle Cell 5K at AutoZone Park. Registration's at 7.30 that morning. The race starts at 8.30. Help raise awareness for this disease while we remember Mark Walden. Well, the search is on for the brother of soul singer Al Green. 58-year-old Lonel Green has been missing since Thursday. Really? Police say he was last seen Thursday when he left his home on K Road in East Memphis to go to the store. Police have also said that he may be confused. Yeah, Green was driving a tan 2000 Mitsubishi Galant with a license plate SJ9863. Yeah, if you see that license plate, please, please call the police and help yeah, out. absolutely. Well, in today's Hot Topics, Lamar Odom, former wow. NBA player and former husband to Khloe Kardashian, was found unconscious Tuesday afternoon in a Las Vegas area brothel. Yeah, owner of the Bunny Ranch, Dennis Hoff, says that the Odom, uh, Odom was taken to the hospital. His condition is unknown. Hoff says to his knowledge there was no illegal drugs, but that Odom was taken taking a lot of what Hoff called herbal Viagra. You know what? I think that Lamar has had a rough year. No kidding, man. You know what I mean? It is. Like, he's not playing basketball anymore. You know, no. when you have a dream and you can't reach it anymore, you know, it's, it's like Debbie Downer. I used to hope that he would come to the Grizzlies. You know, he's yeah, really yeah, good. He could have came. So he I, could have come. I hope he gets out of this okay Yeah, somehow. he is. His marriage to Khloe Kardashian yeah. failed. And then recently here, one of his uh, childhood yeah, friends no. had passed away yeah. from a drug overdose. Yeah. You know, it's just a, it's a, a bad situation yeah. from Lamar. But Thoughts and prayers out to him and his family today. I agree. Well, Nashville star Hayden Panettiere has been outspoken about suffering from postpartum depression since the birth of her daughter, Kay, last December. Now she's getting help to overcome it. In a statement, her rep says the actress is seeking professional help at a treatment center. You know, when they tell you about postpartum depression, you think about, okay, I, I feel negative feelings towards my child. I've never, ever had those feelings, and some women do, but you didn't, you don't realize what broad of, of a spectrum mm -hmm. you can really experience that on. Wow, happy she's getting the help yeah, that she, no kidding. you know, That's a tough deal. Well, trending this morning, live from New York, it's <laughs> Donald Trump. The GOP front runner will host Saturday Night Live for the second time around. Now, his previous stint as host was back in 2004. Trump takes over Studio 8H on November 7th. All right. And who's the sexiest woman alive? You are. Thank you. I was going to tell you, you're supposed to say me. You get it. Okay, no, seriously, according to Esquire, it's the mother of the dragons.
Really? Yes. Uh, the magazine, uh, is it Amelia Clark? Is that it? Yep, that's so her. Pick of the year, they're calling her a movie star and the girl next door. Clark plays on Game of Thrones, which I hate to say I've never seen. <laughs> but you know what? I'm right with you. Okay, good. One of <laughs> these days, clips. I'm going to catch up with right. her. Right, I've seen clips, but hey, but I must say she is very sexy. Yes, I will give is. her that. Well, the new film Room is generating early award season buzz. At the Toronto Film Festival last month, it won the Big Audience Award. It's based on a best selling novel about a boy and his mother who spent years living in a 10 foot by 10 foot windowless room that's called a control room at the radio station. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, George Finocchio has more, seriously. <laughs> You chose to tell Jack that room was the whole world, that there was nothing else. Good morning, lamp. Good morning, plant. Good morning, sink. In room, Brie Larson plays a woman who's lovingly created an entire universe for her young son. But in truth, she was abducted, gave birth to her abductor's baby, and has lived with her boy locked up since he was born. She now sees a way out. This is a love story between a mother and a son. And it's a film about childhood, about parenting. It's a life-affirming film. Larson says she spends most of her time now doing Q&As with people right after they've seen the film. And everyone seems to have such a unique personal experience because of through watching the movie. And hearing that, hearing the connection and what it means to them, I mean, that's amazing. Eight-year-old Jacob Tremblay plays her son. It's really deeply interesting. The escape scenes are very, very crazy because you're like, are they going to escape? Because the first one doesn't work out and then they have to try the second one.